you can't layer on technology that's impactful later. You really got to get it into the building. And so that was something that I learned early on, and that's what we've been working on. Hello, and welcome to Sink or Swim, a weekly podcast brought to you by RentSync, where we take a deep dive into the prop tech, multifamily, and rental housing industry. In each episode, we uncover the technologies and strategies used to help overcome operational challenges and increase the value of your multifamily investments. So let's get into our conversation today. Welcome back to Sink or Swim. Happy New Year, everyone. I'm your host, Matt Hildebrand, Marketing Manager here at RentSync. We're kicking off 2023 with a great guest. Joining us today, Rob McDougall, Senior Vice President at West Bank Living. West Bank is a leading luxury residential and mixed-use real estate development company here in Canada. All right, Rob, thank you for joining me today. Thanks for inviting me to participate. So before we really dive in, I'm hoping you could tell the listeners a little bit about your background and what brought you to West Bank. Sure. So I've been in the industry for just about 20 years now, since I moved to Vancouver back in about 2003 from Halifax after university. And I've been consulting at West Bank for about 10 years in a variety of roles. Started off helping out with, with marketing and digital, and my role has evolved over the years to now supporting smart buildings and really any any service layers that involve digital. That's awesome. Touched on one thing there, smart buildings. We'll get into that a little bit later. It's an exciting topic. Um, but first, uh, one of the main reasons we wanted to have you on today there's quite a bit of buzz about some of your newer projects that are coming up. Seattle, Toronto. Hoping you could tell us a bit about those developments and what makes them such exciting projects for the purpose-built market. Sure. So I guess to start, like West Bank has been around for a long time, founded in Vancouver, but we practice in Vancouver, Calgary, Toronto, Seattle, Tokyo, and uh, most recently San Jose. And, you know, we started out doing condo and, and did some office, but about 10 years ago, uh, made the decision intentionally to, to start to shift some focus into, into rental and, and purpose built rental. And the first project that we brought into market was a brand new build. The first one in the West End in Vancouver for almost 30 years called the Lauren that leased up in, in 2014. And since then, the pipeline has grown to about 20,000 units. And we've got almost 3,000 online today with, you know, a ton of inventory coming on every year. And so, yeah, Mervish Village in Toronto is, is a big one that's finally coming to market in 2023. That's 891 apartments. It's 100% purpose-built rental. It's anchored with a, a market. There's a lot of art, culture, music, food involved in the site. We really want it to be a cultural hub in that neighborhood in, in Toronto. And then I know you referenced some other cities, so some other stuff we're doing in, in Seattle. We've got uh, two large projects in downtown. One is called Museum House, and it's a partnership with Fry Museum. And it's got architecturally very beautiful, a sky bridge connecting the two towers. And then another project that's that's got a lot of press for us is 1200 Stewart and that the press that we've gotten is about the Boeing 747 that we've integrated into the podium of the building, which is, which is pretty cool. In San Jose, got a lot of press for what we're calling the West Bank campus. That's a lot of office and purpose built rental in downtown San Jose to try to, I guess, really create a, an exciting city and an exciting downtown in San Jose. And one of those rental buildings is Orchard. So we're working with a lot of great architects in that project. Um, Kengo Kuma, Studio Gang, longtime collaborator James Chang, as well as Bjark Engels, another, another longtime collaborator that we have a project in Toronto with. So lots of exciting work. Obviously, all of the architecture of the buildings are very beautiful, but we're also thinking beyond just the built environment and starting to think about the amenities and the things that we put into the base of the building to really animate everyday life for our residents. That's awesome. You touched on a few things there. These buildings are very beautifully from an architecture standpoint, kind of brought West Bank to these decisions to really embrace architecture and kind of make these buildings stand out a little bit more and 
gain some of that press and really create a hub in these downtown cores? It's been sort of the basis of the practice from the very beginning. So which long preceded me participating with West Bank. That was one of the reasons why I wanted to work with them. I had been working in the industry for about 10 years. I worked on a bunch of different stuff for a lot of the top developers in Vancouver. And obviously West Bank had always been doing things that were just, you know, just a different level of of design. I know we, we talked about how I started with West Bank, but a funny story is that when I moved to Vancouver, while I was looking for a job, you know, that was in my field of study, I actually, you know, come from a family that, that worked in construction. So obviously I would just take take a job in construction right away just to get to, to get working. And one of the first buildings I worked on as a sub doing um, concrete forming for, for LEDCOR was Shaw Tower, which is where West Bank's headquarters is. So I knew who West Bank was before I really knew that I was going to be working in the development industry in Vancouver. And so I kind of followed their practice. And Woodward's was obviously a, an iconic project that they did. So really, it's been, I guess, in the DNA of the company from the beginning. And that just idea of doing extraordinary buildings has and is and will be what the practice does. Yeah, like you said, their core, the, the DNA there. Mervish Village is um, yeah, getting quite some buzz. A lot of people are talking about it in the area. Very excited to see that when it's fully finished there. Switching gears a little bit there, um, you know, you talked about some smart buildings and things like that. Um, when we spoke earlier, you mentioned that you had the opportunity to head down to Las Vegas and attend the National Multifamily Housing Cancels Optech Conference. Um, Optech is you know, going to be a big topic in 2023. Was there anything that you kind of learned there that you would take away and you're maybe looking to implement or explore for 2023 and beyond? Yeah, for sure. It was, I'm really glad I went. I, it was my first time heading down. As I said, like we at West Bank had been doing condos and, and intentionally shifted some of our resources to rental because of the need for for rental housing. In Canada, we've been building a lot more condos because that's where the opportunity has been. And in the U.S., it's, it's, it's a bit different. They're almost inversely building apartments and the pre-sale condo is not a, a big, big thing, but for a couple markets. So for me to go down there and, and kind of participate in roundtables with COOs and people who are, I guess, operating at, at a much larger scale with big portfolios and the kind of emphasis they're placing on on technology and efficiency and things like that was, I wouldn't say eye-opening, but definitely encouraging as to where we are today with our systems and processes and where we want to get to. And just, I guess, being exposed to the thinking and some of the ideas was really exciting. And as far as, I guess, big topics of conversation and, and things like that, business intelligence was was a big one. Infrastructure was another big one. Hardware and stuff wasn't as big, I think, this year as from what I was told as it, it's been in the past. But the business intelligence and the infrastructure were two topics of discussion that uh, I think everyone spent quite a bit of time and there was a lot of dialogue around. Yeah, that's a big one for sure, infrastructure. And that's a pretty good segue into our next question. Something you spoke about or touched on a little bit earlier was, you know, the idea of smart buildings. And, you know, when we say smart buildings, we're not just talking about Nest cameras, we're talking about a core infrastructure. Can you touch on the benefits of implementing smart features? Maybe how West Bank has been looking at this trend and maybe if you could offer some advice to any developers that are just kind of exploring some of these features now. Sure. This one has been, I guess, a, a bit of a love hate for me over the last couple of years. So I started looking at it probably about three years ago now where, you know, a lot of companies are reaching out to us pitching us different different things. And so we knew we had to kind of move into the space. We understand the business drivers of it, whether that be operating efficiencies or tenant experience or whatnot. But we had to kind of figure out, well, what makes sense for us in terms of what kind of product offering we're trying to bring to market and the experience we want to deliver and financially, how does that work within our business model? 
So yeah, definitely been a challenging environment to navigate. There's lots of new things and it's been evolving very quickly. But what I landed on pretty early on in after a bit of trial and error was that a big thing that we need to do is to dig into the the guts of the building, not look at adopting sort of an app or something at an operational level, but we need to get into the infrastructure and start to re-engineer how we're designing our buildings. And again, I speak from personal experience just with, with our projects having come from, say, you know, a process, a development process that's geared toward condos to a development process that's geared towards to rental buildings. So engaging with our operations and property management teams earlier, getting them involved in the discussion about what we're going to deploy in the building and trying to get at a schematic design level, some of these things, you know, either budgeted for, planned for, put in, spec'd, et cetera. So having a strategy and, and getting that going at the outset is really important. You can't layer on technology that's impactful later. You really got to get it into the building. And so that was something that I, I learned early on and, and that's what we've been working on. So taking things out of mechanical electrical scopes, dealing with them from the perspective of like a master systems integration, mapping those to, you know, whatever software products you're going to, you're going to deploy with the building for the service layer. That's been a core part of my role for the last three years. And adjacent to that was also the communication services. So the telecommunications that we put into the building. So the two are kind of hand in glove and the kind of network you need to operate and stand up different systems is important. And so that's something that we've also been doing, working with, you know, the likes of TELUS and Rogers and our consultants to ensure that we have the right kind of network. And in our case, we've, we've opted for the managed Wi-Fi route and putting that into our buildings and making the business case for that and standing up our systems on those networks to kind of give ourselves, a, I guess, a converged network as opposed to consumer services and base building services. That's been our approach. And I think after much trial and error and, and sort of head scratching, we've kind of figured out figured out that infrastructure. And now we're kind of moving to, to a place where we've got an ecosystem of products and service providers. And, and now we're looking at um, advancing our, our tenant experience from or on top of that infrastructure. It's probably something you said too about scalability and how that's a big issue too. And I'm sure you're looking at doing some due diligence at that aspect as well. For sure. It was, again, because I had a technical background, it was easy to understand that I wouldn't be able to integrate or manage integrations for 30 or 40 different products. Like we'd have to kind of pick some horses and ride with those. So that was sort of understood very early on, but it, it was also reinforced. I was listening to someone, and forgive me for not knowing his name, but he was hired, I think, in a role with Oxford as like a CTO or something. And he had said how they had a, a portfolio of, of buildings, all with you know a variety of different systems and managing and maintaining those systems was going to increase in cost over time such that it would be a real drag on their portfolio. So they... They were being proactive and and looking at that because the operating efficiency that you you get from you know having standards and and being able to manage your buildings that way was critical. So I definitely took that advice to heart and applied it in my work. Like what you hear so far? Make sure you never miss an episode by clicking the subscribe button now. This podcast is made possible by listeners like you. Thank you for your support. Now let's get back to the show. So switching gears just a little bit there, we touched on smart buildings. Now, in major Canadian markets, we're really noticing that the competition is heating up. You know, rental demand is down, fluctuates during the winter season. And with rental prices increasing year over year, noticing renters are now looking for not just a, a nice place to live, but they're looking for those modern amenities to really help justify the steep prices that they're now paying to live in these major markets in these downtown cores. So how would you say West Bank approaches this and really how do you decide on, you know, what needs to be modernized to really help increase the value of the asset? This is a difficult question for sure. You know, I don't know that we have all the answers to it, but, you know, touching on what we discussed earlier, certainly just the quality of a 
the building, the timelessness of the architecture and how it's going to stand out in the skyline is, is important in desirability. We obviously try to build in the right location, which helps. And again, I'm dancing around the amenity question, but from our perspective, there's a, you know, from the outside in, there's a, there's a quality that we're trying to, to achieve. And we've aspirationally have thought of, of the portfolio as like, you know, West Bank living should be seen as, as a lifestyle and it should be kind of a three or four star hotel experience. Like, so we're, we're really leaning on our experience in hospitality with the restaurants we own and, and the hotels we own and trying to curate our amenities in, in such a way that they live a little bit like a hospitality experience. So the way we design our lobbies to all our gyms are designed and managed by our boutique fitness concepts house so you'll get a gym that while it's in in an apartment building it's at the level of a gym that you would you know have a membership to so it's just taking that approach um and we've sort of applied that in our first generation of projects and we're still looking at refining that and figuring out how to invest in amenities in a way that you know supports the value of the asset and supports the rents that we're seeking and delivers the best experience to our residents that's awesome. That's a you know, lifestyle is a big topic right now for the purpose built industry, really you know, building a brand, creating a lifestyle. You know, another significant trend to kind of look out for in 2023. And, you know, I think this is a good segue is, you know, what other income can be extracted from these properties? And I've touched on West Banks, you know, even just looking at Mervish, you know, the retail, the restaurants, everything like that, you know, how do you approach this idea? You know, what type of feature services and even partnerships would you really take a hard look at implementing in 2023 and beyond? Yeah, I think for us, it kind of goes back to, again, talking about our DNA and what we kind of describe as being a bit of a culture company and wanting to, as you said, kind of curate a lifestyle for people that are going to be, you know, renting from us or dining at one of our restaurants or getting coffee at one of our cafes. It really comes down to, you know, these complementary lifestyle services or businesses that enhance the real estate offering. And so what we'd like to see and what we're working towards is ways to connect the West Bank world into a kind of a single interface. So I mentioned we were at, you know, we've kind of figured out our our infrastructure layer and we've got the early machinations of our service layer. But definitely the future for us is to develop that relationship with our tenants and connect them to the businesses that we operate. And hopefully that relationship flourishes and it leads to people spending a bit more money with us, whether that's getting a membership to one of our fitness concepts or being a regular diner at at the kitchen table groups, restaurants, those types of things. So that's that's really how we're we're seeing our property. We see the opportunity for for us to have rent be you know a major source of income with this portfolio, but also with other income, we'd like to see uh, the ability to connect these these different businesses with our tenant and, and hopefully generate other income. The same way that you know you look at seniors housing and, and they have rental space, but they also have healthcare services. And we'd like to see our properties deliver lifestyle services that are commensurate with that model. Yeah, really adding value to the tenant, you know, embedding it into the rent a little bit more, really just a kind of a win-win for everybody. That's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing you know, a lot about what West Bank does. A lot of the projects are very exciting. I uh, applaud our listeners to go Check out West Bank, um, check out MervishVillage.com and all their other projects. They're visually very stunning. And I think it's going to be very exciting for the areas when they're you know, move in ready. Rob, thank you so much. Like I said, check out uh, West Bank Living. And if there's anything else you want to let the listeners know, I'll just kind of open the floor to you. <laughs> so thanks, Matt. I was going to do a shameless plug for Rent Sync, actually. Oh, you guys. All years. <laughs> <laughs> We've been a client for quite a while. And it's a fantastic service. It, it definitely fits within our tech stack. I know we didn't get too deep into like our leasing process and, and what we're doing there to try to streamline operations, but the services that Revenstinks provided us fit in nicely with, with our leasing operations. And we've been 
we really enjoyed the partnership with your team. Well, we really appreciate that. Look forward to working with you in the future and hopefully we can have you back on again sometime. Great. Thank, thanks again, Matt. No problem. All right, that's it for today, everybody. Have a great night. You've reached the end of another episode of Sink or Swim. Make sure to visit us at rensync.com forward slash podcast to access show notes, key takeaways, and where you can sign up to our newsletter to receive free bonus content. If you found value in this show, please also remember to rate, review, and subscribe. Don't forget to join us next week for another episode. Thanks for listening.